Today we're going to talk about the ratio of volumes of similar solids. So similar to what we did last time um, with the area of objects, we're going to talk about the volumes. So I'm going to talk about the ratio of the sides and then the ratio of the volumes. See if we could find some sort of relationship ultimately when we get down to A to B here for the spheres. So the ratio of the sides, first thing I see is I have 5 to 10. Now when I take the volume of those, that means I'm going to get 5 to the third, because that's how you find the volume of a cube, to 10 to the third, and that simplifies down 1 to 8. Next I have square pyramids. So if you remember, there are pyramids with a square base, so you take one third the base area times the height to find the volume. But first, let's talk about the sides. And I have a ratio of 4 to 6, which simplifies down to 2 to 3. Two to three. So that means the volumes then, if I take one third times four squared times six, and I divide that by one third times six squared times nine, that will simplify down eight to twenty-seven. Now I have two cylinders. Here I'm just going to take a look at the ratio of the sides. In this case, I'm going to use the heights. And that simplifies, or that is 9 to 15, which simplifies, oh, running out of space, down 3 to 5. So now the ratio of the volumes, maybe you've already seen a pattern, but um, I need to find the volume of both cylinders. And that's just, uh, I find the area of the base and I multiply it by the height, so pi times 6 squared times 9, and then I relate that to 10 squared times pi times 15, and when I simplify that down, I get 27 to 125. So maybe if you're seeing a pattern here, um, by the time I get to the spheres, or really we could think about it for any similar solid, then if my the ratio of my sides is A to B, then the ratio of the volume is going to be a to the third to B to the third. So let's go ahead and take this information and use it for some problems. The ratio of the area of the corresponding faces of two crystal cubes is 25 to 49. So pretend I have, here we go, two cubes, crystal cubes, so that means they're super fancy. And the ratio of those two cubes is 25 to 49. So the ratio of the areas. Then find the ratio of the corresponding sides of the cubes. So first we have areas. So areas we know the ratio is a squared to b squared. So then if I want to find the ratio of a to b, I have to take the square root of both these values. So I'm taking the square root of 25 and the square root of 49, and that tells me that the ratio is 5 to 7. So the ratio of the corresponding sides is 5 to 7. Then what I want to do is find the ratio of the volumes. Well, if I know the sides ratio is a to b, then the ratio of the volume, given the pattern we discussed earlier, is a to the third to b to the third. So I'm going to take 5 cubed to 7 cubed, and that's going to get me 125 to 343. So that's the ratio of the volume of the cubes. And that's going to help me because if the mass of the larger cube is 686, I need to find the mass of the smaller cube. Well, I know the ratio of smaller to larger is going to be equal to 125 over 343, but I know that the larger, the mass of the larger cube is 686 grams. So then what I can do 
is use cross multiplication and that's going to tell me that my answer is 250 grams. So the mass of the smaller cube is 250 grams. Cool stuff, right? Yeah, I thought so. Now, here's a challenge for you. I love this problem. The diagram shows a cup in the form of an inverted cone of height 18 centimeters and base radius 7.5 centimeters. It is filled with water to a depth of 12 centimeters. Find the volume of water in a cup. Here's a hint. Look for similar triangles.